Now let's take a look at Bifilter 2, the great sounding stereo filter from Tone 2 included with X3. It consists of 47 different EQ filter types, although most of them are based around the four basic types of filters. That's the high pass, low pass, band pass, the notch or band reject filters. We'll take a closer look at the main types, how they work and sound, and some of the possibilities for the others in this plugin shortly. As well as the EQ filters, there's also a distortion module with eight different types of distortion to choose from. Again, we'll look at this in a bit more detail later. First, let's take an overview of the interface. It's a compact, efficient looking interface, and at the top is the EQ filter with a filter selector on the left. Use the arrow buttons beside it to step through the filter types, or click in the filter name display to open a selector. There is a large rotary knob for adjusting the cutoff frequency, which is displayed numerically next to it. A slightly smaller knob adjusts resonance, which is also displayed numerically beside it. Toward the right is a graph display that indicates the resulting EQ curve created by the filter type, frequency, and resonance controls. Bottom left is the distortion unit. The basic distortion type is selected by clicking on the text display or using the arrow buttons to step through them. Just right of that is a control for adjusting the amount of the chosen distortions added, as well as a pre-post button to control whether the distortion is applied before the filter or after it. The mix section contains a wet-dry control for mixing the level of process and unprocessed signal, as well as a bypass button to switch the processor in or out. Right of that is the preset management area where the currently loaded bank of presets can be loaded from. In addition, banks can be changed here using the load button or saved using the save button. Now let's take a little bit more detailed look at the filters, the controls and how they affect the sound. MyFilter 2 is suitable for use on any sort of audio, but is particularly effective for use with synth, especially when automating the frequency and resonance controls. I'm going to demonstrate it over looped playback of one of the loops included with Sona. Let's take a look at some of the basic filter types first. For purposes of the initial demonstration, I'm going to turn the resonance control down to zero. We'll look at what that does shortly. A low pass filter, as the name suggests, only allows audio through it if it's beneath its frequency setting. This is known as the cutoff frequency. The resulting EQ curve is plainly visible in the graph display. The light gray area indicates the frequencies allowed through. How suddenly the filter works at the cutoff frequency is controlled by the slope of the filter. On the Bi Filter 2, the slope is preset by the filter type chosen from the filter choices. For example, there's a low pass 30 dB and a low pass 12 dB. The 30 and 12 refers to the rate at which the audio is cut once above the cutoff frequency. 30 means it falls or rolls off at 30 dB per octave and 12 rolls off at a rate of 12 dB per octave. You can see in the graph window that as you'd expect, the 30 dB slope is steeper than the 12 dB slope. Now let's look at the resonance control. This affects how the audio around the cutoff frequency is handled. At zero, it does nothing and the filter looks and acts like a regular low pass filter. Increasing the resonance control adds a gain boost around the cutoff frequency and that's reflected in the graph view as well as audible as the filter affects the audio. As well as these two basic low pass filters, there are another five, each with their own unique shape around the cutoff. These can all be further enhanced using the resonance control. A high pass filter is the complete opposite of a low pass. This only allows frequencies above the cutoff through. The same slope types govern the roll off rate, and the resonance control has a similar effect around the cutoff frequency. Traditionally, these are used in mixing on various instruments to clean up the low end, but again, with use of automation on the cutoff and resonance control, they can be used creatively. as well as the two basic types, or another couple of variations to choose from. 
Next up are the bandpass filter types. As the name suggests, these filters allow a band of frequencies to pass through them while blocking others. Think of them as a very, very severe peak filter, the type that's commonly used in EQ units, apart from these don't allow anything through either side of the band. Their basic bandwidths are controlled by their slope setting, so the resonance control acts like a regular Q control and can be used to narrow the band by boosting the cutoff frequency. The BR type filter is a band rejection or notch filter. It does the opposite of a band pass filter and rejects or cuts frequencies at the cutoff, allowing all others through. The next few filters are all based on EQ curve shapes. Low and high shelf act in the same way as those filter types on an EQ. Low shelf applies boost to all frequencies beneath the cutoff frequencies, and high shelf boosts those above the cutoff frequency. The boost difference of the shelf is governed by the resonance control. For example, the low shelf for the resonance control at its highest setting resembles a low pass filter, while on its minimum the difference is barely perceptible. EQ loudness boosts both low and high frequencies, cutting the mid-range. Low frequency boost is controlled by the frequency control and high by the resonance. There are two different peak types and a block type that cuts either side of a broad frequency range. The VOC filters or VOC filters are all based on the formant sounds created by the human voice when saying vowels. There are seven of these altogether. W shape is based on a pair of band pass filters, while M shape is a low and high pass filter combined. Resonance controls the width of frequencies between them. All pass and phase change and offset phase respectively. Comb filters are like a series of bandpass filters and create a sequence of peaks and troughs with various densities of comb available. In addition to these other filters are a resonator, which is a type of oscillator, a couple of diffusers, a delay, a resampler, a double formant, as well as amplitude modulation types and frequency modulation types based on various wave shapes. Let's listen to the effect of some of these as I adjust controls and change filters. As well as all the filters, there are the eight different distortion types that can be used to further shape the sound and spark your creativity. Choose from volume, tube amp, transistor, presence, hard clip, bit crush, wave shape and POW2. Adjust the amount of distortion added using the drive control. The dry wet control in the mix section is used to mix the dry and process signal together and the balance between the two will depend on many factors such as filter type and the effect you are trying to achieve. And that's BiFilter 2, a great filter with a huge amount of variation and almost limitless possibilities.